Mark coming to you this evening on a Garage Gate 79 channel and like I told you in my latest video, goodbye Canica Lead, hello question marks. At the end of that, told you about the Glock 32 Gen 3 chamber and 357 SIG. And this is a firearm that I am really excited about. I mean, I just, man. I haven't had this much fun shooting in a long time. As a matter of fact, while we go down here and watch a little bit of video I shot earlier in the week of me uh, taking pot shots at a five gallon can of uh, aluminum roofing paint. Uh, the can's maybe a third of the way full still yet. It'd been sitting here in the back of the garage, I guess, for like 20 years. I've got a corner where I got stuff I haven't used in ages, and I was cleaning it out, and I come across it, and I'm like, heck yeah, this would be the perfect thing to try out this 357 SIG ammo on. So let's go down here and watch it, and then I'll get right back to you. What you're looking at here is an old uh, pail of uh, roof sealing paint, aluminum based. Forgot I even had it back in the garage. It's about 20 years old and it's still maybe a quarter of the way full. What I'm going to be shooting at it is this Sig Sour 125 grain ammo full metal jacket. It's uh, 1,356 foot per second velocity and rated 506 foot pounds. So this is pretty good stuff, and I have never actually had any problems with this right here. Two 13-round magazines, a total of 26 shots. We're going to be firing this old bucket right here. We'll see what kind of damage we can do. Let's check it out. All right, I'm going to be about 10 yards from it. Let's do this. Boy, I can see the holes already. Well, you see, I removed the uh, camera from the tripod here. And we'll just walk up and see just how air-conditioned this old bucket is. Whoa. Oh, well, there's an exit hole. My God, what an exit hole. I can get my nose picker down in that. Entrance hole, exit hole. Good Lord. And you can see the gunk and stuff down in there. Shoo! Boy, that stirred it up. Huh. 357 SIG, like I said, a serious round with some serious damn punch. Let's head back up to the garage. Well, people, <laughs> you saw what happened to that bucket. I mean, the entrance rounds were just nicely round and perfect, smooth. The exit rounds 
Man, that would tear a bad person a brand new one. 357 SIG is a caliber I actually thought I would not own. You know, a lot of people may look at it as a novelty ring on myself. Uh-uh. I don't think that. But I know I've read some comments and here on YouTube about it and uh, on the online gun forums. A lot of people's like 357 SIG, maybe a passing fad, it's dying out, it's on its way out, and then Nowadays, I hear just the opposite. Why a Gen 3 Glock and not a Gen 4? You know, my 19, it's a Gen 4. So why did I pick Gen 3? Well, why not? There's nothing wrong with these Gen 3 firearms. They're proven, they're tried, they're tested. Law enforcement loves them, uh, military, uh, personal, civilian use, hell, even bank robbers and criminals love a good Glock and they're going to use it if they can get their hands on one. Uh, I don't know, this right here, my favorite all-around caliber, 357 Magnum. And as we all know, there aren't a lot of semi-autos out there that shoot that round. Now, I could have got a 357 Magnum revolver, but the one thing I would be giving up would be, unless it was a snub nose or a air weight, I'd be giving up, uh, you know, the small size. I'd be giving up capacity. And there's the ability to reload very quickly. I know a lot of people have these uh, uh, reloaders for revolvers. You're not going to reload a revolver, even with one of those, near as quick as you can drop a mag and slap another one in and rack a slide. You know, some people might get close to it, but I'm sorry. You know, it's just a fact. You're not going to be able to reload a revolver as quick as a semi-auto. Uh, Koonin makes a 1911 model chambered in 357 Magnum, but who in the world wants to pay twelve or $1,500 for that? They're great guns. I'd love to have one, but you know, I could spend 550 or whatever on a good semi-auto chambered in 357 SIG and keep the other $1,000 and have all kinds of adventures with that money. Okay. Let's talk some more about the Glock 32 Gen 3 here. As everybody knows, the Gen 3s come with uh, two 13-round magazines. Gen 4s come with three. The Glock 32 is the same exact gun as the Glock 23. Only one difference, and that is the barrel. Some people say, well, what about the magazines? Well, the newer mags, uh, 40 Smith & Wesson works just fine in the Glock 32, the 23 mags. Work fine in the 32 and vice versa. I mean, you can switch back and forth on each gun, and of course, uh, like a lot of other people that have this gun, or the 23, I'm going to get the... Uh, 23 barrel for this so I can shoot 40 Smith and Wesson and, you know spend a little bit less but you know there's just something about that number 357 Magnum yeah that's the big dog SIG well I think it's underrated and I think uh, more people are getting into shooting this here nowadays and you know it just, I don't know, this is a round that carries plenty of power and plenty of punch. And that's something you're probably going to hear me say more than once in this video here. Uh, this is an excellent firearm. Uh, I'm not a Glock fanboy, but this uh, 32 is pushing me closer in that direction. Uh, the 19 I have here... It's a Gen 4. Uh, Y'all seen it here on YouTube before. Excellent firearm. 
had not had any problems with it. Uh, maybe once in a blue moon, a little bit of weak ejection, but that seems to be something a lot of the uh, Gen 4 Glock 9 millimeters are guilty of. The spent shell ejection, go back to the part of the video where I'm shooting, and you will see just how damn far the uh, spent shell casings are getting kicked out. I'd say a good 20 foot, easy. Three, four o'clock positions, easily 20 foot. That is not an issue with 357 SIG coming out of the block. Now, the other reason I have my 19 up here, I wanted to show you something that uh, I found out about the 32 and the 19 as far as my shooting ability, okay? I'm gonna move the camera around to where I can get in and do a close-up. Okay, this right here is something that uh, helped me with my accuracy, and I ran across it by accident, I guess, like most of us do. Now, everybody knows the Gen 3s, the uh, 19s, 23s, and 32s, all come, you know, in one size as far as the grip goes. There's no back straps, okay? It's one size. And when I was doing some shooting with this, first time I had it out along with my Gen 419, I found that I was shooting the 32 much better than the 19. And it'd been a long while since I'd shot 357 SIG. You'd think, well, heck, somebody'd be able to shoot a nine better than a 357, but that wasn't the case. So I kept looking at what I was doing on one and might have been doing something different on the other. Okay, here's what I figured out. On the Gen 3, where I would have my finger right here on the trigger, I would have it like that. You notice it's not overhanging. As a matter of fact, I got the pad of my finger right here on the trigger. That's how I was squeezing the trigger. On the Gen 4, 19, I didn't have the back strap on. I was just shooting it as it came without one. And I had not the pad of my finger, but this crease right here or that bend on the trigger. And you can see right there how it's kind of overhanging. Well, Everybody knows if you put a medium back strap on a Gen 4, it's the same exact size as a Gen 3. So what I did, I put the back strap on here and I found myself shooting or pulling the trigger with the pad of my finger right there and my accuracy really improved. So what did I do after that? Of course, I put the old Talon grips on here, medium back strap on a Gen 4, Talon rubberized grips. And a Gen 3, I just put some Talon rubberized grips on it. Now, both of these guns with the Talon grips on them feel exactly the same. The only difference is recoil and as far as the 357 SIG, the recoil isn't that bad, all right? To me, the recoil is more, I don't know, kind of back in your hand like this. You know, there's really no muzzle flip. Especially with those 125 grain uh, rounds I've been shooting out of this. No muzzle flip, it's very manageable. A lot of people say uh, 45 ACP's got that dull thud, that dull push back in your hand like it. Well, I can say the same for 357 SIG coming out of this Glock 32, except, you know, it's a little more pronounced. It's not a dull thud. It's Kind of like it. You can feel it, but it's more of a pushback. It's not all that muzzle flip like you might find on a 40 Smith & Wesson. A very manageable round. Like I said, a serious round with some serious punch. 
but it is very manageable. And I found it very easy for follow-up shots to get back on target. 357 SIG, you know, a lot of people's been reluctant to get that round because they're worried about muzzle flip, recoil, that kind of thing. Uh-uh, not from my experience. You know, I've just got to say this, 357 SIG is a very addictive round. Well, I just thought I'd show you there, you know, a little tip that uh, helped me shoot better. Uh, a lot of people probably already knew something like that, but then again, there's those of us that just run across those kinds of things by accident, and I thought, you know, it'd be important to maybe show some people that, you know, maybe they hadn't figured that out yet. Uh, just hoping that can be of some help to some people. Now, uh, 357 SIG, you know, in any firearm, I do not recommend it for beginners. I don't think anybody does. You know, if you're just starting in shooting, you hear all this talk, oh yeah, 357 Magnum, that's the stuff right there, or 45 ACP, you know. Well, if you're a beginner, don't go out and buy a gun chamber in those rounds. Get yourself a 22. That's probably the ultimate round to start shooting with if you're a beginner. Then work your way up. Uh, 22, 22 Magnum, 38 Special, 9 millimeter, and then work your way on up as you get comfortable, you know. It, you can kind of call it an evolution. Uh, nobody that starts out just shooting a 357 Magnum or SIG or 44 or whatever. No, you're going to get discouraged because you're not going to shoot it all that well to begin with. Especially if you're a beginner. You know. And this here, 357 SIG, is a very loud round. You know, whenever you're shooting this or whatever, target practicing or even a walk in the woods or whatever, you know, at least have some form of hearing protection with you. You know, some people think, oh, I don't need, you know, hearing or eye protection. But I'll tell you what, no protection that does not make anybody look macho, that does not make anybody look like some big kind of tough guy. To me, that just makes somebody look like a friggin' botard if you don't use hearing protection, especially when you're target shooting. Now, in a self-defense situation, you're not going to ask the bad guy to say, wait, hold on until I get some earplugs and uh, eye protection on. That ain't going to happen. We all know that, you know. Uh, but if you're out target shooting, practicing, plinking, or whatever, use proper hearing protection, especially with this round right here. You'll be glad you did. Uh, 357 SIG ammo, yeah, that's an expensive round. These 125 round uh, cartridges I've been using are $27 for a box of 50 at Wally World. I run across uh, 357 SIG ammo called Zip, and that was like $40 for a box. But am I going to carry this as a concealed carry gun? No, I'm not. In warm weather months, I'm going to be having my M&P shield right here. And cold weather months, Glock 19 Gen 4. This 357 SIG right here I've got, it's going to be more like a uh, woods gun, a camping gun, and a travel gun. You know, I can get plus P rounds for these uh, nine millimeters, and they could come close to the 357 ballistics, but uh, not quite there, but they will come close. But this right here, I wanted something, like I said, more power, more punch. Do I miss that can of Elite uh, I sold? No, I don't. This right here just made all that heartache go away. <laughs> uh, a lot of people might say, well, Mark, if you get to Gen 4, the recoil is going to be less because it's got a double spring guide rod. 
I've shot plenty of Glocks Gen 3 and 4. That double spring uh, guide rod, to me, there's no noticeable difference. I can't tell any. I haven't shot the uh, Glock Gen 4 in 357 SIG yet to see if there's any difference. But I've shot it in other calibers. There was no noticeable difference, and I can't see why it'd be any different with this right here. Uh, You know, also, the reason I didn't do a breakdown and all that and take it apart, it's been done a blue million times before here on YouTube. We all know how to do that, so I'm not going to fool with it. I like to leave my Glocks stock. I do wish they would come out with steel sights instead of these plastic ones, but uh, you take care of it, the plastic will do just fine. Uh, of course, people do have accidents. If they get in a stress-filled situation, might end up dropping it or something like that. You might uh, chip a sight off or something. It happens. But I leave my Glocks stock. The only difference, talon grips. Makes a world of difference. Well, look, I guess I babbled on long enough. Uh, I'm going to be doing follow-up video on this when I get about uh, 1,000 round mark. I've got about 250 through this. No problems whatsoever. It's been flawless. And the only thing I did to this gun when I bought it new out of the box, I put a little bit of oil on it. That's been it. And I probably won't clean it until after the thousand round marks because these Glocks, they just seem to work. Like I said before, I never thought I would own anything chambered in 357 SIG, but this right here made me glad I did. You know, it's addictive. Nothing else I can say about it. Look, I know I babbled on long enough, and I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, please feel free to click the like button, leave any comments, and if you have any questions or you feel there's anything I've left out, please say so in the comment section, and I'll be sure to get right back to you. And when I do the follow-up video, if there has been anything I've left out, I will be sure to cover those topics, all right? This is Mark, GarageGate79, coming to you. When you go shooting, you be safe.